This is a Pioneer 640. There's the badge. This is the hard drive. You have to loosen the sticky tape here to allow this ribbon cable to flex up. There's a screw here, there's a screw on this side, there's a screw here, and there's a screw here. You can use the flat head of a short screwdriver to wedge in between the circuit board and the drive. Gently twist and twist to release it. And we can lay that over. You don't have to disconnect the flat panel connector. You use the needle nose pliers to clamp down on either side of the Molex connector and then just push and it releases. And we can lift the hard drive out. And we can connect the hard drive to the USB dock. Sometimes these Molex connectors get twisted about just a little bit. There we go. Now, this laptop already has IsoBuster installed. We'll just turn on the dock so that it begins to spin up the drive and give the operating system just a moment to recognize there's a drive attached to the USB dock now. It recognizes the USB dock. Start up by Sylvester. We point it at the drive attached to that dock, and it's identified. Let's see if I can get that. So you can see that a little better. It's identified it as an X40 type uh, hard drive from a 640 Pioneer system. It's going to take just a moment because this drive has over 290 recordings. The status indicator shows that it's indexing everything that it sees on the drive. It's not actually scanning the entire drive, it's just scanning the directory entries. And over a USB 2 bus, it can take just a little bit of time. They do make these docks in USB 3, which are faster. However, I tend to like the older tiny, especially the kind that have these front access ports for like the IDE drive. Okay, these are all of the titles that it discovered on that drive. And these are the actual titles that the recorder would actually display if you went through its title list. So we can scroll down and pick specific programs indicates when they were recorded, how large they are. We can right click and we can extract them. When we extract them, it asks where do we want to save them. In this case, I'm going to tell it to save to the desktop. Previous, in previous videos, I've already saved out uh, two videos. I'm going to save a third one. And that drive is being pull, it's pulling that recording right through that USB hub, right into the laptop. Okay, and that one was 255 megabytes. And we can tell it to play with whatever media player we got. In this case, I'll say Windows Media Player. And they recorded it in a 352 by 240, I believe. So it's a little bit small. At higher speeds, it'll be greater resolution. And of course, you can select multiples, and you can choose to right-click and say extract these objects. It'll also ask where do you want to put them. You don't have to do that. 
but I will go down here and out of 292, I'll get one more. It says, where do you want to put it? I'll say the desktop. And I might point out that this is a PADA drive. In some of the other videos I've shown you, uh, we've used a SATA drive. It really doesn't make a difference to IsoBuster. IsoBuster just sees it as a bucket of bytes. It makes that incredibly easy. So we can choose what we want to play that with. Again, it's a low res recording because we had it on super slow speed. And that was a very poor signal. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.